Hey, this is Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I want to take you through a couple of charts here for ESNQ and YM, uh, looking at to the setups for next week potentially, and what we're going to be looking at. Um, for this this chart setup, I'm going to start from the outside in, which means for me starting with the monthly and the weekly chart, headed down to the daily, getting a sense for uh, where RSI is, where the MACD. I use a 31016 simple uh, MACD. Um, and I want to get a chance to look at is another thing that I've added to these two charts or these two panels which is a MACD based on a one period uh, exponential moving average which is price the closing price a 34 period exponential which is the center line of our cloud that we have when we plot the cloud on a chart and this this shows me the difference between a the price and the center line of the cloud and you can see the extremes as we start pulling farther away from the cloud it's sort of like a rubber band stretching and the farther away it gets the more energy is loaded in the rubber band and eventually that thing's going to snap back uh, to the mean or in this case a 34 period exponential moving average which is the center line of our cloud so that's what these two on the weekly and the daily chart are showing and when I change this down to the 30 minute, I'll eliminate those, uh, some of those charts and signals. Um, in any event, I'm going to look at the ES, NQ, and YM for this. Let's start with the monthly. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And you can see uh, on the monthly chart, we have had a pretty big down month, right? So this is when the Fed was announcing a significant withdrawal of liquidity from the market by the reduction of the Fed's balance sheet by some one to two trillion dollars and uh, that news uh, liquidity being taken out of the market is not a really a good thing obviously I mean this is liquidity in right so we're putting in liquidity by QE and printing money and buying bonds and that kind of thing increasing the Fed's balance sheet and then we start uh, reducing interest rates and removing liquidity from the balance sheet market really doesn't respond very well to that uh, Europe is still pumping lots of liquidity in and China recently within the last uh, year or so has started to accelerate its own QE program so when the Fed at the end of December uh, came out with their we want to be patient meeting after saying at the December rate hike meeting that they wanted to uh, December rate hike was you know they were going to be aggressive at pulling liquidity out and then uh, not too long after that there was a speech where I think the word being patient was used some 20 or 30 times and uh, a lot of people in the market are calling that the Powell put and uh, when that happened significant reversal in the market I think we had a hundred and thirty point reversal day on that meeting and uh, I don't know that I've ever seen an ES 130 point day and I think a couple days later there was a hundred point ES day on the upside so significant reversal in any event um, all of that activity hasn't really pulled the MACD back towards the zero line. So this is still indicating the three period simple monthly average is below the 10 period monthly average. And if you look at the weekly over here, you can see we've had several up weeks in a row. And as a matter of fact, I think every week since that bottom was put in, we have had a weekly higher high and a higher low. So we are clearly in a, in a substantial uptrend and the MACD in that case is starting to it's shot up it's over the zero line which indicates the three period moving averages over the 10 and we're starting to see uh, maybe a little bit of exhaustion in this move and, and the way I look at this um, of course anything can happen I say this all the time uh, but as I look at this chart between the weekly and the monthly I got the monthly below the weekly above and my guess is uh, especially since we have news driven activity and we're at near, near resistance lines in uh, the prices of the weekly and the monthly you know we got the monthly high here we got the weekly high here my guess is that we probably will have some sideways, sideways action and consolidation uh, for a period of days into weeks now if we get China news that comes out or any other news moving event we could significantly move one way up or down uh, but right now it looks like the markets could likely be uh, looking for a potential pause situation and if I switch to the NQ 
pretty much the same activity. The NQ is just starting to flatten out and maybe curl upwards. The weekly, that's the monthly, the weekly is starting to top out and it might roll over. Uh, you can see that on the monthly we're about ready to hit this monthly high which could be resistance so we get a monthly high up here or weekly high up here and a, you know a couple week closes uh, weekly closes up in this area uh, so I think all of that indicates to me that we you know we're probably going to be waiting for news uh, before we start making the next move all the major earnings announcements are out and we're kind of at that stage where I think digesting the news after a significant move off the bottom is more than likely in play. I think the YM, if I remember, was just a little bit stronger. It's already closed above uh, a prior monthly high, or didn't close. It actually came up and touched it, uh, which you can see also in the weekly. But again, we've had higher highs and higher lows, clearly a significant uptrend. Uh, if I look at my distance from the cloud on the weekly, um, I wouldn't say that it's at an extreme. The extreme was back here, and you can see what happened when we hit an extreme. We had a pretty sharp move down. Uh, we had another uh, extreme area maybe up in this spot right here, uh, which we haven't quite hit, and we're starting to you know roll over a little bit. And on the low side, the extreme was down here. So I'm really using this to look at extremes as opposed to making uh, buy-sell decisions specifically on the cloud, which is the center line of the cloud would be this zero line here, the cyan line. And you can see the YM on the monthly has not, uh, you know, clearly we had some negative divergence, right? So we had a high in the MACD and a lower high here where price was going higher, right? So that was the significant uh, negative divergence which led to or, or indicated a potential for a pullback and certainly with the Fed activity, we did get the big pullback on the monthly and uh, significantly, you know, the higher. This high with price was met with a lower high in the MACD and yet a higher high in price, so that's negative divergence from here to here. And that led to the potential for, and what occurred was the fall down in price. So that's the three uh, indexes looking at uh, how things are looking at the monthly and the weekly. For me, the overall message and what I'm looking at is, you know, RSI is an, an extreme. Wouldn't say MACD is going to be doing anything with one above and one below. Um, more than likely, just some consolidation and going sideways. So I'm going to go to my daily chart here and uh, get to where some of the levels are that I'm going to be looking at for uh, futures activity and trading levels and that kind of thing going forward into next week. Um, I've got a volume profile chart here and what I'm going to use the volume profile chart to do is help me decide what the levels are going to be for each one of these indexes. And uh, the other thing I'll point out um, that I've done is I've added a little indicator to the chart and I'm going to eliminate it when I go below it daily. But just a, an interesting observation here looking at these crossovers when uh, the center line of the cloud, the 34 EMA, uh, is coming from below to above which means price is going through the cloud and above the cloud, um, I'm plotting arrows. So the yellow arrow on the bottom of below price is price going above the cloud, and this magenta arrow is price going below. It prints when price crosses below the center line of the cloud. It's an interesting observation. Uh, you can see that this could be a way to get in and out of trades or keep you maybe on the right side of the trend uh, as defined by the 34 period exponential moving average uh, as being the above below line for the trend. So you can see I you know went in, got out, got in again here a little bit of a choppy uh, market activity in this area which gave me above below above again um, and I was you know stayed in this trend and there really haven't been any signals since then and we're still you know well above that and haven't crossed down back into the cloud on the daily time frame so there really isn't any indication yet that we we have exhausted uh, price activity and we're doing anything more than continuing a nice healthy uptrend with you know potential little pullbacks that are all viable you know this pullback here was viable that corresponds to this area in price but we really haven't had anything from a trend perspective that says either I want to get short or I want to throw on a bunch of protection or um, you know take a bunch of profits and that kind of thing the only potential indication we're starting to get is the RSI has started to hit that 70 level 
and you can see in these areas when it's hit in that area we do tend to get some pullbacks and that may be the first potential area of caution to be looking at carefully uh, coming into next week and maybe the week after uh, for potential exhaustion or sideways movement here in price. So the volume profile that I've got this is one year uh, volume profile so this is the volume by price over the last year's activity and in between these two yellow lines is the area where price has traded the most volume, 70% of the volume I should say, which is one standard deviation of volume by price. And this uh, red line here is the singular price with the most volume traded at that price over the last year. And we would say that in the value area has been the fairest area where prices have traded. And often you will see traders you know, below value uh, would be looking to go long and above value be looking to take profits uh, go short and that kind of thing and as you can see in the last year's price activity we are now above the value area uh, for YM I'll show you NQ uh, NQ we're still below the high of the value area we're right around that area where in the last 12 months of trading we've had the most uh, volume uh, traded so it's uh, probably the fairest price if you w will that uh, business has been done. The RSI has not hit that potential uh, overbought area to be looking at. We are getting a little bit of negative divergence in the MACD. You can see there we're making lower highs in MACD while price is going up so that is an, another or it's a potential uh, signal for exhaustion to be looking at in NQ and I think we probably have a somewhat similar picture in ES on the daily. We are starting to see slightly lower highs in the MACD as price is going up, so that's another potential uh, looking at areas of exhaustion. The, the one period or where price is closing relative to the 34 EMA cloud, it's you know kind of in a higher area. If you look back over time, this particular area is uh, of the highest uh, area for prices where it's closed the furthest away from the cloud and those are areas where we start thinking about um, you know maybe not entering new longs uh, looking for sideways consolidation if you're an options trader maybe selling uh, you know premium above the value area high and that kind of thing uh, the only caution of course is with this China trade news uh, you know a really super positive note could come out and uh, ruin all of that thought uh, so that's the area to be careful of I'm gonna throw my levels in now on these charts and I will zoom in to a 30 minute chart and start removing a few things but I do want to point out that I have thrown in you know some levels around where the value area is I've looked at where the expected move is I'll just show you briefly on how I get expected move uh, if I go to the trade tab uh, all products uh, if I look at the ES and I look out one week in time which is to the March expiration you can see the uh, expected price movement range is about 34.3 points. So all I did was I took this closing price and added and subtracted 34 and a half or 34 points more or less and put these expected move lines. So for the next week's activity relative to this close this is where one standard deviation of price is expected to move based on how options have been priced in this market. All right, I'm going to move to the 30 minute chart and it'll give you a little bit more clarity on what the levels are. And I'm going to remove a couple of uh, plots here. I'm not going to show that study. I'm not going to show that study. Get rid of the, the arrows so it's a little bit cleaner. And these are the levels that I'm looking at uh, based on the uh, volume profile I've had here. Now, this volume profile looks back on a time frame I'm gonna to go to 90 days back so this volume profile shows me 90 days of price activity and that is how I have obtained the levels um, and I'll show you how prices reacted to these levels but in any event I've got a low volume node here in the volume profile so I've set a level there I've got a high volume node which is the volume point of control on this last 90 days at 2731 and I've got another 2680 low volume node and I didn't add this high volume node here 
since it was close and I've got another price down here at 2621 which is the low value area so what have I plotted in for price if I go back to the uh, daily and I draw this price levels in um, these two prices here this high candle and this high candle to me sets up a zone between these two candles and I'm looking at that as a resistance zone so these two top blue lines that are plotted are going to be a resistance zone so if I go back to my 30 minute and I look at those two price levels that's the 2784 and 2814 as price comes up into there that's the two highs of the daily candles that I'm looking at potentially being a resistance zone and you can see above that I've got the expected move uh, one standard deviation based on options so I've got a lot of indications here that this area in the 2814 uh, to 2824 and up to the expected move by the end of the week could be a resistant zone for ES uh, to be looking at as I see it and we've got this high which was the high of the week 2798 I've got that which also happens to be the last 90 days value area high in the volume profile so I've got a couple of coincident areas indicating that I'm at the fairest the high end where 70 percent of the volume is traded over the last 90 days by price I'm at that level set up by this high and it is kind of amazing how these things work but they do end up being uh, sticky levels if I look at the lower side of where I am if I look at where price closed and I subtract the expected move that's this purplish dotted line that you can't really see but it's also a low volume node set up by the volume profile it's where there's a little air pocket let's say in the volume profile in this area and look at how price has reacted into that area you know we've come up touched it a few times come back down gotten above it it's come back and touched it almost touched it here come back rolled up touched it again so that to me this little zone around this 2761 area would probably be right now it's an area to buy if we get below it and start closing below it we start looking for the next level below which is 2731 where we've had a lot of volume traded and activity so if we're in this range we're looking to trade between 2761 and 2798 to 2814 potentially we're in this resistance area we might get some news that drives us up but you know potentially we might be trading in between this area if we drop below it we're going to be trading from this blue line to this blue line if we drop below that you can see this high volume node and this low volume area is where price is traded right so we've gone up to this area it's hit resistance pulled back come up then gotten through it come up to this one pulled back so you can see if you plot these lines on your chart it's area where it's areas where price has found support or resistance so drawing these on your chart can help you when you start seeing pullbacks activity that is occurring that you might want to trade against as opposed to um, you know maybe going yeah I wouldn't be taking shorts down in this area to me this would be shorting in the hole and you can see as price drove down here lots of traders start chasing this quick price activity but in what really occurs is this smart money starts buying in those areas and you can see price reacted which was a prior resistance level now becomes uh, current support and when you hit this level it's come back up okay so those are the price levels that I'm looking at for ES so we get another one down at 2621 currently and you can keep adding them you know I didn't add one down here 25 21 potentially uh, you can plot that in your chart but this volume profile uh, activity and you can see price all the way at the corner of the chart almost 90 days ago did hit that level and come back so you could potentially put a price in this area at 2520 right so you've got this area that's acted as resistance then it became support when we broke through that level and traded up to this one we did end up with a support area down here so those are the levels and how I get them in ES how the volume profile can help to work um, I will show you the volume profile setting here um, that I've got I've just you know it's a standard thinkorswim um, 
indicator you can add volume profile set it to tick size um, on the set it to the chart tick size chart on expansion yes plots it out to the side as opposed to separate profiles uh, based on a one day time frame um, I'm showing the point of control I'm showing the value area the value area is 70 percent that's where 70 percent of the volume is traded over the last 90 days which is I'm setting it to chart time frame so it's plotting the volume profile based on the length of the chart which is 90 days okay that's how I got it now another thing that I do uh, is I turn off the extended hours um, extended hours of trading I will shut those off and what I do here is I start looking for gap areas and at one point I did have gap areas let me see if I got it. here we go so I, I also draw in gap zones and how I draw a gap zone and why I draw gap zones is I'm looking for a, a one day's close and a gap on the regular time hour session to the open of the next day so these blue boxes and rectangles that I've drawn, drawn using the uh, rectangle um, uh, drawing tool is showing where one day's close is to another day's open and I look for these gaps to be areas to eventually be filled and you can see if you go back in time you can find uh, just about every gap that occurs eventually gets filled so for example I'm looking at this gap here from this cl uh, close of this day to the open of this day sets up this rectangle and you can see we tested two inside the gap a little bit but did not fully close it so I leave these on the chart until the gaps uh, you know technically get closed uh, this gap here from this low to this high eventually did get closed right so we traded up through this price and the gap in the rectangle that I had here is now gone but this particular one here is not um, so the gap zones that I have drawn in and why I have them drawn in is really specifically for that level for those ideas and as I look at this resistance area up here and I look at trading down to this price I'm thinking eventually we're going to get down through this gap zone probably this 26706 2700 level round figures tend to be sticky levels the 2700 area is also another one you know where you can see some congestion has occurred in this area so I do expect uh, the 2707 2700 area especially since it's a gap in the regular time hours to be closed uh, is an area we're eventually going to get to maybe not next week maybe the week after but inevitably I think we're going to get there okay so that's ES and the levels in ES if I do the same activity in NQ wait for that to come up uh, I'm gonna get to the default drawing set and you'll see I've done the same thing here uh, the expected move for the week gets me up to 7211 and then the low side I get down to 6989 um, I still do have the time frame set to 90 days so this volume profile from where I've gotten the levels and high and volume high volume nodes and low volume nodes is uh, is in here and you can see on the 30 day price chart as I zoom in we do get reactions uh, in these levels we've come up come back down uh, come up again traded through the price back down to this level and so on um, let me go back to the I'm just going to turn on the regular or the extended trading hours here so you can probably see that a little bit better uh, so you know we've had the reactions on the price here we've had it it's consolidated in this area it's a higher volume node we've gotten a lot of uh, time and volume activity in this area uh, not so much it's a low volume node here so these tend to work as support and resistance areas and so forth so you can see uh, when I've got the extended hours trading which covers the overnight session on the East Coast time from 6 p.m. to 930 the next day um, you can see you know by the volume profile all the levels I have drawn in here and as I cut off um, you know again the 7167 uh, expected move there was a high price candle back here 
levels on the weekly chart. You can see I'm setting up this zone uh, in here on the weekly chart <coughs> and uh, the activity that I'm looking at on the 30 minute chart for the next week's trading zones uh, based on volume profile and you know sticky levels um, you know I'm looking at 7113 7068 7040 and then into the gap areas if I turn off the regular time hours futures shut that off you can see the gap zones that I'm looking at based on the close of this day and the open of this day <clears throat> I'm looking for you know over the next couple of weeks again uh, consolidation maybe some pullback trading back into this gap zone and this gap zone I don't expect it based on the expected move low side at around 69.89 to 67,000. Uh, uh, not likely we're going to see that particular gap filled next week based on the expected move um, activity. But within the next couple of weeks, maybe we should see some activity trading back into here, and then this uh, volume point of control at 69.12 in NQ. And I'm going to look at YM real quickly. I'm going to turn back on the futures extended hours trading session. I'm going to show the levels that I have in here. Again, these are levels with expectations to trade between them. Uh, this, these were the high candle areas back a few weeks ago on those high prices that zone that I talked about being resistance 26.121 to 26.301 and then the week's expected move at 26.384 the low end expected move at 25.700 we have uh, this value area which I showed before on the other chart was the value area high um, and we have the value area low at 239006. That's the last year's price activity. This one, I don't know why it's so dark red. This is the volume point of control on the daily chart going back one year at 24,700. And the sticky levels based on volume profile over the last 90 days. This blue line at 25,326 is probably an area we'll get back to in the next few weeks. We have the expected move down here at 25,700 and then we've got this area here uh, getting into the gap zone uh, which I think we're eventually going to get into over the next couple of weeks and what I'm looking at for some sticky price zones here. If I turn it off the extended hour session see the gap zones a little bit more clearly you know this one here this uh, gap I expect to be filled uh, not too long from now and you know this area here the 25 895 and all this resistance up above so you know I think the trading over the next couple two or three weeks until we get the news uh, the next news event is probably going to be that they're going to extend the deadline for raising the tariffs. Uh, that will probably add to some bullish activity. Um, the news continues to be positive. I don't think we're due for any major correction, you know, back into the 20% pullback range unless something ne really negative on the trade happens or some, you know, pulling of liquidity by the Fed or something like that happens. Some other catastrophic news event. Uh, Brexit could, you know, add some some challenges to the market. Uh, the Brexit activity, I think, is due uh, some answers or where they're going to do with soft or hard Brexit is uh, due not too far from now. But um, in any event, this was a long enough video at 30 minutes. The future ones are going to be shorter because I'm not going to go through all of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Uh, this was really the setup video for the first uh collection of things I'm going to be doing uh, here probably once a week over the weekend showing levels how I'm getting to them and uh, where I think 
trading uh, support and resistance zones are going to be for trading futures on ES, YM, and the NQ. Hope that helps. Take care, guys. If you have any feedback, uh, let us know here at Trade the Fifth. Take care. Bye.